when somebody else is upset, when somebody in my org is upset, I do the same thing I learned to do with our little kids. The first thing you do, and by the way, this works in any relationship, romantic relationship you have too. The first thing you do is when somebody's upset, you repeat back to them what you just heard them say. And then you follow it by a sigh. <sighs> and then you wait. You just sit there and wait. You let it sink in. I heard you, man. It registered. And I'm not going to try and fix it yet. I'm just going to sit and wallow in it with you. Like the one thing we all crave is to be heard and validated, right? And we skip that. And particularly, I mean, for technologists, entrepreneurs, VCs, you immediately jump to the solution. And that, that can be a real detriment because the person just wants to feel like they were heard and validated and that you feel their pain. And so you stop and just, ah. And then the next words out of your mouth have to be a question, not a statement. So the next words out of your mouth are, huh? So with a little kid, I'd be like, so, hmm, what do you think would happen if we drag that, you know, car out onto the lawn? Huh? You build a hypothetical that sets them up to succeed, that sets them up to have an answer, to lead them down. You may have a solution in mind, but you have to let them find it along the way. You can't impose it. And so this is a really big deal for me. Like, and it's funny. I mean, it literally came from raising toddlers and people would be like, why don't your toddlers tantrum? And I was like, because they start, you can see it, right? You can see that. I mean, just kids have fucking huge feelings. Like I'm a Calabrian, you know, like I'm a, my, my, my ancestors come from Italy. I can fucking explode on a moment's <laughs> notice. So, so you get those initial big feelings. But then it's like, all right, how do we diffuse that and make sure it doesn't just become a screaming fit? And, you know, and no one, no one in your life is going to stop crying. You're like, Hey, shut up, stop crying. That doesn't work. You know, just like no one in your company is going to be like, stop whining. And so, so the same thing happens. I set that up in reverse when I want to coach an employee, I express my feelings and, and I don't have to do it enraged. I'm just like, I express them as this is where I think we fucked up, or this is the disappointment. And then I ask them. So what do you think we can do going forward? And that gives them, that sets them up to succeed. That sets them up to own the solution. That sets them up rather than like, fuck you, you fucked up. Don't let this fucking happen again. Shut the fuck up. You know, like, like, look, next time, this is exactly how you have to fucking do it. So fuck you, hang up. Like that's the least effective way to manage ever. And so if instead I'm like, look, we obviously fucking ate this one right here, you know? And I try and say we, cause we're a team. And so I don't try and put it on somebody, even if it's clear, they're the one who fucked up. Like we obviously took the fucking apple on this one. And so, uh, and this is it, you know, this bothers me because it reminds me of something that, you know, means something to me personally, or I hate being in the situation. These are my feelings. And, you know, and I don't, I don't beat around the bush. Like these are my feelings. I feel fucking let down or I feel like we just lost some of our competitive edge or whatever. And then what do you think we should do about it? How do we prevent this from happening again? What should we do going forward? Then the person who fucked up owns the solution. Like I, I, you know, and so, so there's no shortage of big feelings. There's no shortage of rage, <laughs> but, but now I've set the other person up to succeed and headed off at the past. So it doesn't happen again.